Nix OS has generated a lot of heat in recent years. My last Nix OS video was one of the most viewed videos on my channel. Lately, one of you guys suggested I revisit this distribution. I figured why not. Last time I was focusing on doing work on it, but this time let me see how easy it is to get the games working on it. After using GNOME extensively recently, I wanted some change, so I downloaded the KDE version Live CD. The installation program popped up after booting up from the installer. It says it needs to connect to the internet, and after typing the password for Wi-Fi, the encryption had an error saying there is no proper key. I was able to connect to the Wi-Fi by clicking on the cancel button here, but the installer keeps saying there is no internet after that. I had to reopen the installer to proceed. After the user creation, it is time to choose the desktop environment. I chose Plasma again here. It also lets the user to choose if they want to allow unfree software. Given I have NVIDIA GPU in this gaming laptop, I tick the box. After partitioning section, the installation started. It felt pretty long, especially when it reached 46%. It stuck there for more than 10 minutes. Good thing is, there is a terminal button, so I was able to see that it was not actually hanging. With the installation out of the way, let's do the reboot. The very first reboot is not going into the desktop environment. Now is the good time to check the menu. From the Nix OS website, go to Learn, and you need to scroll down to see the Nix OS menu. For some unknown reasons, they keep the Nix package manager stuff on the top. Interestingly, it doesn't mention there is any extra step needed for the DE to boot up. According to his wiki, I should have been able to see the system now, which is clearly not the case and I was wondering if it is the matter of the NVIDIA GPU. Before installing the NVIDIA driver using the method in the manual, I found they also have a dedicated wiki page which has more context. It says there might be issues if the laptop is booting with the HDMI plugin, and that is exactly what I was doing. Usually I use the HDMI cable connected to this video capture card with an external machine to record Linux installation on bare metal. Never had an issue before, but for Nix OS, after unplugging the cable, I was able to see SDDM and logged in to the system. Very interesting issue indeed. Then I followed the wiki page to install NVIDIA drivers by adding the proper field into the configuration.nix file, which took me around 2 minutes to complete. Unplug HDMI, reboot, I can still see the Novo related error in the shutdown process, and SDDM no longer showed up after that. I checked systemd which gave me no error. I then started to follow the wiki to make NVIDIA work in sync mode. Three things needs to be aware here. First one is, in order to have Lee's PCI command, I had to add PCI util package inside my user package section. Second, I had to change the Intel bus ID to AMD GPU bus ID. You can find the correct config name on the NixOS search page by switching to NixOS option. And finally, since KDE hasn't started yet, I had to use NMCRI to connect to my Wi-Fi to make sure the rebuild can pass. Reboot, and now I can see the NVIDIA SMI command working. It also fixed the HDMI plug and start issue. It's time to install some applications. Since I last used NixOS, the system has changed its way of installing applications. When I go to the Nix ENV tab, it says the recommended way of installing an application is either using Nix shell to temporarily try it out or using the Nix OS configuration to make the app permanent. I wanted to see if the temp app can pick up the NVIDIA driver properly, but after installing OBS Studio through Nix shell, I had a hard time finding it in the application menu. It seems with the dash P option, Nix will create a temporary environment for the application. I was able to start it using the command line instead, which is fine, and I could see the NVIDIA encoder inside the settings. As an immutable system, Nix OS has to support Flatpak. I follow the Flatpak wiki to enable it. 
rebuild the system and reboot. Add a flat hub repo after that. Then I can install bottles, flat seal, and find out the application icon images will show up in the app menu after reboot, which is not a big deal. I also try out the non-flat pack way to install Steam by adding it into the config file. Then I put Assassin's Creed on it. Whoa! I haven't seen this error after recording the video about Ubuntu Unity since February. Come on, NixOS, you need to catch up. Then I installed Proton Tricks as a system app as well. But it gave me this weird error before I could install Uplay with the game. Let's go full on Flatpak then. There was no issue with Uplay installation or the game launch. Come on, Nix, you really need to catch up. Then I migrated the Red Dead Redemption 2 and imported my bottle backup from my gaming fedora. It's time for benchmarks. If you saw my free Windows video, I want to mention that the result there favored Atlas Windows because Fedora was running on an external SSD. I wanted a rematch with Linux on the same disk this time. So before partitioning Atlas OS, I also installed Tomb Raider, Assassin's Creed Origins, and ran benchmarks on both of them. Now, after all three games benchmarked on Linux OS, I had some learnings. First, I shouldn't blame the USB 3.0 speed because the Red Dead Redemption 2 running on NVMe had an even worse result than Fedora. It has a higher maximum of 93.3 and lower FPS of 21.75, with lower average of 45.92. I realized that I was using X11 at the time and wondering if Wayland can perform better. Surprise, surprise. After switching, I was getting 32 minimum and 67 maximum and almost the same average FPS of 45.4. This is exactly on par with Atlas Windows 10 with only 2 frames lower in all these numbers. Way more stable than X11. Same story when comparing the result of Assassin's Creed. On X11, the overall frames is 400 down compared to Atlas at 83.96, but only 100 down on Wayland at 86.51. And even though I didn't see any glitch with Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmark, I could clearly see a lot of them in Assassin's Creed. I saw them on both, but more on X11 than Wayland. It was more interesting with Tomb Raider 2013. For these 10 year old games, I can max out at 120 FPS on Atlas, but on Nix, I can't even set a game to 120 Hz, and the benchmark is way down. I got 81 as minimum and 106 as average, even though the maximum is higher than 120. These are the numbers on X11 because on Wayland, I can't even start it with Nvidia. I ran the benchmark twice, and it kept at 22 frames per second. I bet it was using AMD integrated GPU. Hmm. With all the learnings here, I will be checking the best desktop environments for gaming next. If you're interested, please help me by subscribing to this channel and ring the bell, so you'll be notified when that video is out. Thanks. If you have paid attention, you might have noticed some of my screen recordings above are actually from Cinnamon Desktop. That is because everything you have heard in this video are mostly from the third time system installation I did on second day. I had to do it three times in total because I was following the official manual for the first two. After seeing SCDM not able to start, I immediately installed a video driver according to the manual. And when that didn't help, I blocked the novel driver and switched to LightDM and Cinnamon. Then one thing led to another. The TLDR is, I just couldn't figure out how to make the proprietary driver work until I finally find out the official Nix OS NVIDIA wiki page and decided to install the system for the third time. My suggestion for all the new Nix OS users is to not to stick only to the official manual. When you suspect something, go and see if they have a dedicated wiki page. It might save you a lot of time. For me, I wasted my first day from 11 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. two times installing the system and more than 20 times rebuilding on each of them. Then I took some rest, started fresh the next day, 
and the third time it took me only three hours to finish everything along with the scripting and recording. Don't be like me. And that is all for this video. Thank you for watching and suggesting I look at NixOS again. I was shocked at how long it took me to figure out stuff for the second time around. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.